but you don't you don't know and you're not going to know because you're now recuperating from what you just put yourself through which was stress if your trades are stressful you're trading too big your risk is too much the easiest solution to that drop down in your leverage i can get out there and i can find these five handle run these five handle runs 20 handle runs 15 handle runs 30 handle runs and i'm holding on to five contracts 10 contracts because top step says i can do 15 so i'm trying to push the envelope i got things to do ict but it's hard for me to hold a trade so i get out too early what am i doing wrong you're over leveraging you're trading too big you haven't given yourself time to grow up into five contracts 10 contracts, let alone 15, what guarantees you're going to blow your account. That's what they want. I want you to trade with one contract. Look what I did with the TD Ameritrade account last year. I doubled the account trading one contract with lots of losing trades to showcase my students. I mocked up, draw down, put myself in situations they asked me to do. This is what I do. And this is where I fall victim to it. How would I do that? I went in there and actually did it. With real money. Took 25000 to over 50000 Five and a half weeks. One contract. Now, $25,000 a month. That's probably good for most of you, even if you are doing well. And if you, if you could get just one quarter of that consistently, that can change your entire life. Imagine if your mortgage was paid, half your mortgage was paid, half your mortgage and a car note and insurance. That's a blessing. But much like trying to make those ends meet, some of you want to just be able to quit your job right now and get away from Carl and Bruce. And you're rushing it. And you're thinking that as long as I'm right, As long as I'm right, I'll get there quicker. And quicker is not the right thing. You got to be on time. It's the same goal you have when you go to work. You want to arrive on time in one piece, prepared to do your job. You can't rush success. You can't. It doesn't work that way. And placing so much emphasis on arriving sooner than what's realistic. Think about it. When I used to have to go to work in the morning time, I had pretty much a straight shot because I'd get up really, really early. Drive a 45-minute drive, 40-minute drive in 20 minutes, speeding, admittedly. But I hated going home because I would be in rush hour traffic. Think about what you do to yourself sitting in traffic. You know damn well there's 150 frigging cars in front of the one in front of you. You know that. But your limited myopic perspective is this asshole is holding you up. So what are you doing? You're riding on his bumper or her bumper. Looking in the rear view mirror. Yeah, look at me, bitch. Look at me so I can tell you you're so-and-so. What did you do? You lost the plot. You got emotional. You're demanding something. You can't move that wall of cars. And being angry about it doesn't move them faster for you. But yet here you are in your car, pissed off, cussing at everybody, ready to get out, swing your tire iron and break somebody's windshield because it's holding you up. You're trying to get somewhere. And these people are doing this intentionally. They're holding you up and they're thinking about the same thing to the person in front of them. And that's what traders are doing when they get in the marketplace. They want to get somewhere too quick in, in impossible conditions. You lose sight of what you're doing. You get out there trying to prove to the world that you're better than somebody else and you wreck your ass. Turn your live streams off before they really end and go into a losing trade. You know it's you know what it's all about. You know the score. They all have these problems. They're wrestling with it. You're wrestling with it. 
because you're trying to do more than what's required. Follow the model. Follow the rules. Listen to the analyst in you. When it tells you you're in troubled waters, you do not flake out like you're in rush hour traffic thinking that you're going to be able to bully everyone out of your way. What do you do? Oh, you got all these good advice, ICT. What do I do when I'm stressing out in the car? Listen to ICT. <laughs> How about that? How about that? Because if you can listen to me, even if you don't like me, complain about me. Oh, bitch, you're a demo baller. We don't see you trading a live account in live. Go ahead. Put your attention there. I'm a therapy. Okay? Because if you're doing that, you won't get yourself in some kind of road rate event. And you'll probably get home safely. And you won't be worrying about the traffic. You'll be distracted. And that's what the process does for those individuals that when they get in troubled waters and they're in their market and their trade is causing them anxiety. As soon as you take half off or close, if you can't do any partial half, what you have done is you've distracted yourself. You've removed that need to be right. I could be making less money if it goes to my target. Yeah, you could. But what are you gaining? Peace of mind. You're engaging with a now resumed approach to holding no hard line. It has to be my way. When you first put the trade on, you may have had a clear vision about what it is you're expecting to see in the chart, how you're going to ride it to that profit objective. But something changed. And you have to be sensitive to that. Allowing the analyst to speak to you through your conscience, say, okay, you know this is probably not going to pan out right now. So what we should do is take half of this off. Roll to stop to break even if it's not already there. Or if you have it in a trail position, don't squeeze it anymore. Just leave it there. If it turns on you and stops you there, who cares? I show you that it happens with me. I'm doing that to teach you. I'm showing you that. I can get in the trades and do full pulls, and then just that's all I'm going to do. But I'm a practical teacher. I'm telling you how to grow into that state. You just can't do it right out of the box. You can't. Your mind won't let you. And the people that are highly opinionated about how this stuff doesn't work, I can't do it, you won't be able to do it, you're going to fail, they're not providing anything as an alternative with consistency. So why the fuck are you listening to them? You already have enough on your plate. You know what you're wrestling with. So turn off all of that static white noise. And listen to your conscience. Your conscience is going to talk to you if you've been doing everything I'm telling you to do. It will guide you because of the experience you've placed in its hands. That analyst is going to guide you when it's troubled waters. But you have to let the analyst communicate to the trader in you. The one that's going to make the sound executions on the sound logic that comes from the analyst. The person that you're training with the back testing. The person you're training to observe the opportunities in reading old data and watching real-time price action and tape reading and in the walk forwards and then finally doing a demo. Demo, that's when the trader arrives. He or she has no function in any of this until you get to demo. So the trader in you should not be talking about, I want to buy here, I want to sell here, I would do that. Because that's not the trader talking. That's retail Rick. That's the gambler in you. So you've got three people inside of you right now that's going to be wrestling to be in the driver's seat. The analyst needs to be shotgun all the time. The analyst is right next to you all the time. And you're wanting to hear the logic that that part of you 
when it's time for your conscience to say, okay, th- you're you're in a position that's probably not as good as we thought it was. Do not listen to jokers and clowns out there looking for clout that tell you, just got to have conviction for your trade. If you know that you're absolutely 100% uncomfortable and you are not able to focus on the trade, you are absolutely doing things backwards. And these same people, you never see them execute anything, not even recorded. They don't prove anything. They prove they have an opinion that nobody should listen to. There's this clout police force that's forming, and they're out there trying to keep your attention from learning how to do this. And you're seeing people now bring in real receipts with real money, and now they're uncomfortable because they don't have that. They don't have anybody proving that what they're doing or what they've done is making them any money. See, we're getting into the, the thick of things here now. The rubber's meeting the road. Coming down to the brass tacks. And those that are submitting themselves properly are getting results. And all the old things that they used to be able to say about what we do here. They're finding that it's being met with a bulletproof vest. And it's wrecking ball proof. Atomic bomb proof. You can't beat proof with real money, with real receipts, with real interviews from companies that pay these individuals. I don't own any funded account, so I'm not scripting anything. (laughs) So they're doing something right. That's the following of the process and the model. And you hear in their own testimonies that they struggled, just like you're struggling too. But they kept pressing forward. I'm sure they saw all the things and hear all the things that all of you hear. You're never going to get it. This is becoming retail. This is never going to be retail. Look how many people talk bad about it. That right there is a testimony. (laughs) As long as we got all these people hating on the idea, it ain't never going to be. It ain't going to be retail. They want you to think that because they're insecure. They want you to feel like this is the worst thing for you to be doing. You should be following their garbage. Listen to their bullshit. Don't take partials. Trade animal patterns. <laughs> Gonna wet my whistle here. You're probably wondering why I'm so uh, low key tonight. Usually I go off the rails a little bit faster. I'm actually uh, under some Benadryl. I had to take Benadryl. I had a little bit of a reaction. My wife made some some kind of chicken shit. She was mixing kinds of stuff. She got that fucking TikTok. I'm telling you, I've wasted so much money at the grocery store because of TikTok. This woman watches TikTok, and every recipe that comes out, my house has got to make it, and she's got to ask me all the time, "Taste this, taste this." And if she put something in there tonight, it caused me almost to not be able to do this. Kept coughing and coughing and coughing. So I had to take Benadryl. And I'm a little relaxed, almost to the point where I want to take a, a nap again. But I already took my two naps today. So that's our rabbit trail for this one. But you don't want to go into your trading constantly pursuing right. And you know already, most of you, doing that isn't getting you where you want to be. But you're wrestling, arm wrestling with the results of you trying to do that. You think, well, if I just do a little bit harder, I'll get through that because this is how trading is. No. That's how gambling is. Look at the people. If you had the opportunity to go go to a casino. When I had my first year anniversary, we went to Atlantic City and we stayed at the Taj Mahal. And I only, literally only took $100 down to the casino. That's it. Because, number one, it was my first time at the casino. I've never never gambled like that. And I said, in, in the event that I would take more money than I should, and if I win, I'm afraid that I'm going to get 
compulsive about that and say, I'm going to try to do it again and do it with more and more and more. So I purposely left all credit card, all debit card. I don't even use a debit card, but I'm just telling you, there was no means for me to take any money out of my bank, bank accounts. It's just, this is what I brought and other cash was for you know eating and whatever. And I sat at that one-armed bandit the slot machine. And every time I would get down to the last $10, I just want to lose it because I don't want to have to do this anymore. And I didn't want to do what? Get up and walk away. The analyst in me <laughs> was saying, this is a waste of time. You're not going to make any money. And you're already just wanting to leave, but you're not wanting to get up because retail Rick is pulling the slot machine. But what happens if I get a jackpot? What happens if I win $2,000? The maximum thing I could have won on this was $2,000. And I would make it a little bit up to 75, 65, just under 80 bucks, getting back to oh, the $100 that I put in the machine. And then all of a sudden, it would be spent, 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 spent down to the last $10, $12. And I'm like, okay, it won't be much longer now. And then I won't have it. And I ain't got to worry about doing this. I can go go watch the shows with my wife or whatever. And I'd win a little bit more, but it would be like to be 50 bucks or 40 bucks. And then the gambler in me said, oh, I'm probably real close to one of those big wins. Let me just keep playing. And I sat down there for almost seven fucking hours with the same hundred bucks. Couldn't make it go away and I couldn't freaking make any money above a hundred bucks. I never got it over a hundred dollars. So I'm thinking to myself, this is stupid. Like what the hell am I doing? So finally I just did the maximum bets that it would allow me to do. And then boom, it's gone. And I was relieved that that hundred dollars was spent like that. Cause I was like, okay, now I don't have it. I won't be enticed to do what? Do another run of that and get caught up in that whole pursuit of being right.